iOS 26 is here, and this is one of the biggest facelifts I've ever seen for software across all Apple's products in quite some time. We're talking translucent icons, translucent dynamic widgets, and a new look called Liquid Glass. And I actually quite like it. Some people obviously won't, some people are gonna love it. But yeah, I'm kind of in the middle, like, yeah, I'm all for it. It's not about flashy new colors, but it's more about depth and subtlety. Taking a look at the lock screen, you'll see that now it adapts to your wallpaper, so the clock will actually get bigger and smaller depending on your subject. The new design language refracts your surroundings, and it adapts your content, making the whole experience feel a little bit more alive and integrated. It's overall a softer, more fluid look. And it's not only for the iPhone, it's also extending to iPadOS, macOS, tvOS, visionOS, as well as Apple watchOS. And honestly, I feel like this is pretty refreshing. It brings every single device together into the same design language. And I get the vibe from this update that everything is really focused visually rather than functionality wise, like behind the scenes, because I feel like there's not a lot of new features. It's mainly all about the new UI changes. In terms of Apple intelligence, there's nothing groundbreaking, but we have a few more features. One of the standout features for me is live translation. Imagine messaging someone in another country and their messages are automatically translated right there on your screen. Or imagine you're on a FaceTime call, you can see translated captions while still hearing their voice. It's subtle, but it removes that significant barrier while communicating with people across languages. And it's all done securely on device. On the minor end of things, there are new updates for Genmoji and Image Playground. You can now do more customization with your generations, like changing a hairstyle in a picture and also updating it as a contact poster. Visual intelligence is also getting an update, so now it doesn't just scan things from your camera in the real world, but it actually will go ahead and scan your screen. And you can go ahead and do web searches based off of things you're looking at. And you can easily ask ChatGPT questions about it or search other apps like Etsy for similar items. One of the most useful features is when it detects that you have some sort of event on your screen, it will automatically grab it and add it to your calendar. So let's talk about the redesign throughout some of the apps. Starting with the first one, which is I guess the most classic and important one, which is the phone app. This app hasn't had an update in quite some time, so this is kind of refreshing. It now has a more unified layout, bringing favorites, recents, and voicemails all together. And for those annoying spam calls, call screening has come out, which looks pretty promising. Your iPhone can now gather info from unknown callers before you even pick up, giving you a chance to decide whether it's worth your time. There's also a hold assist for when you're waiting on the line, and it will tell you when the live agent's available. Messages is also at a redesign. You now have polls inside group messages, and now you can see who is typing on the other end in those group chats. There's also some more customization. You can be a bit more personal by adding custom backgrounds to your conversations, and you can overall make your chats feel a bit more you. Continuity between Mac and iPhone also get a lot better with the phone app. Now live activities appear on your Mac's menu bar, so you can flow a little bit more smoothly between devices. I'm personally an Apple Music user, I've been using it now a couple of years and I'm really enjoying it. I love the higher quality that you get and the lossless files compared to streaming services like Spotify. And now Apple's brought some new features so you can actually have translation on your screen of lyrics. So quite often I'm listening to songs in different languages and just to get more connection with the song, you can actually see what they're saying on screen. There's also a new auto mix DJ feature where it mixes songs together, making it more seamless when transitioning. Apple Wallet also has some new features such as paying with installments or rewards. And plus, you now have a refreshed boarding pass feature that includes live activities for real-time flight updates. So I think the most hyped app that's come to iOS 26 has to be the games app. This is your new all-in-one destination for all your games, making it easier to jump back into titles you love, discover new games, and also connect and play with friends. Personally, one of my favorite overhauls has to be the camera application. So now when you open the app, you have simply the video mode and photo mode at the bottom of your screen. You can then go ahead and swipe left or right to get more modes. And there's also a little menu bar that pops up and it has all of those options you would expect to be in the top navigation bar, now accessible from the bottom. And a nice little touch is if you have AirPods, you can now start and stop recording by clicking and holding the button on the stem. Safari's also had a design change. So now you have full edge to edge viewing of websites going from top to bottom. It looks beautiful and the navigation bar at the bottom 
does go smaller as you scroll and it overall just feels a little bit more 3D and a little bit more alive. There's also some new advanced protection that is coming to Safari on all platforms. So there are the main new features of iOS 26 and I've only been playing around with it now for a couple hours and honestly, it is really nice. It's, it looks beautiful. I love all the animations. It definitely feels more alive and more fluid than before, which I never thought was possible, but it is quite laggy. Like it's not quite ready. This is a developer beta. Public beta is coming out in a month and then after summer, everyone else will get it. But yeah, right now it's definitely not ready. So if you're thinking about installing it on your main device, then I would kind of hold back just because I've had some glitches, freezing, and quite a lot of bugs so far in the past couple hours, and I can only imagine it to get worse. And something I found over the last couple months is my iPhone battery has significantly dropped in terms of battery health. And I'm hoping this update somehow improves that, probably not in the beta stage, but when the final version comes out, we can probably see better battery life, I hope. But so far, my phone has been getting kind of warm just from using this, but it has been setting up and configuring and doing a lot of things in the background. So I can only imagine that that's the reason. But I think for a lot of people, this new update will be kind of controversial. Some people will obviously love it and some people won't. I do like the fact you can rock the newly designed icons on the home screen. They are just a little bit more vibrant, a little bit bigger, and they're just a little bit more bold in 3D. But then you also have the new glass icons, which are completely transparent. So that may not be for you and you may just want to use the standard icons like me. And I like the fact you have the option to go back and forth. Something I actually really appreciate is Apple fixed the photos app. So now when you're in there, you have this navigation bar where you can toggle between your recent photos and your collection section. So they've actually fixed that. So now it's not all in one page like before. So overall, it is super nice to see these changes, but it's nothing groundbreaking. And if you're expecting to see some like crazy wizard type AI magic, then it's not here yet. But I still have hope. I still think that Apple somewhere down the line will definitely make a comeback with the whole AI thing. So yeah, do let me know if you're going to install a beta, but be cautious. It is super, super buggy. Or let me know if you're just going to wait it out till everything's neatly polished out after summer. So yeah, that's it. That's my first impressions and overview of the new iOS 26. Peace.